G'day folks, this is Shane. Welcome to Guitar Search Saturdays. This is episode 27, shot at the Melbourne Guitar Show 2018. This is the second time I've had a chance to visit the Melbourne Guitar Show. Even though the Melbourne Guitar Show goes for both the Saturday and the Sunday, I only went on the Saturday, so the footage you're about to see is stuff that I found on the first day of the show only. I'm not sure if much changed on the Sunday, but the Saturday was definitely worth it and I enjoyed it a whole lot more this year than last year. For those who regularly watch the Guitar Search Saturday series, I'm not going to feature a whole lot of the same old stuff I see in every other shop. Instead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what was different to last year and some of my favourite things at the show. For those who don't know much about the Melbourne Guitar Show, it's essentially like our little version of NAMM. There's lots of gear, lots of amps, guitars, and just stuff that's different, as well as a lot of shops showcasing some of the best of what they've got. One of the fun little things that happened this year for me is so many people came up and said hi. They asked me if I was shooting a Guitar Search Saturday episode, and I said absolutely. And it was on a Saturday as well, which worked out well. So thank you to everyone who came up and said hello. It was a really cool thing to sort of meet a lot of the people that view the channel and have viewed it for a long time so thank you so much the melbourne guitar show is actually hosted at the caulfield race course which is a place i would never go unless there was something like this so it worked out pretty well with all of that out of the way let's go check it out one of the major brands that were here this year that wasn't here last year actually was gibson slash epiphone epiphone looked like they're continually putting out quality instruments and nothing seems to have changed a whole lot in their range the standout guitar for me on this wall would either be the casino or the les paul next to it i'm totally digging that color i hope one day they actually make this epiphone 339 in a lefty come on epiphone make it happen Like I mentioned before, it was great to see a Gibson booth at the show, but the one thing that I noticed too was not a whole lot had changed. Maybe the prices have changed a little bit. Check out that SG on the left, 6,399 bucks. Bargain. There's not too many blue guitars that usually gets my attention, but I really dig the finish on these two Les Pauls. I think they look great. Let me know what you think in the comments. If I had to pick one guitar that I sold that I kind of regret, yeah, I know, I do now, was my Gibson Les Paul VOS with P90s. I know this isn't a VOS series Les Paul, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And in Australia, $3,200 is actually a pretty reasonable price. I'm gonna see if I can find something like this again down the track. Check this out, this is one difference I noticed on a lot of Gibsons that were at the show, and not just on the Gibson wall, but other booths that were also showcasing what they have in the shop. So the guitar on the left has the traditional font, and the one on the right has the new font. Yep, I just bought this up on a live stream recently as well, and some people were all for it, and some people were all against it. I'll leave a poll up in the cards, and let me know your thoughts on whether you like it or not. It is a limited edition run, from what I've been told, so it won't go on forever but it's good to see them trying something different. If you've been following the Guitar Search Saturday series, you know I've been raving a little bit more about these Ibanez guitars in terms of their visual look at least. I'm yet to actually play one being a lefty, but I have to say they look really, really spectacular. I'll shut up for a moment and you can check them out. And that's when I saw this. This might be the most confusing bass guitar I've ever seen. It's a fretless and a regular bass guitar in one. I think it looked pretty awesome and it's great to see some really different stuff like this at the show. It was also great to see Positive Grid as part of the show. They make the bias software and now also the bias amplifiers. I was actually with one of my good friends, Khaled, and he thought he'd give one of these new amplifiers a shot. You essentially control it with the iPad it's then got a powered amplifier and all the analog controls on it, and it was going into this quad box slash 4x12, 
and I have to say it sounded pretty great. My friend Khaled's a total rock and roller, but for some reason he decided to play some blues. Sounds good, man. <laughs> What you're looking at is Strandberg guitars. Now these have been around since 1982 and they come from Sweden. And these are beautiful looking guitars. They're very, very different. And like I said at the start of this episode, I'll be showcasing some of the different stuff that I've seen at the show that I really liked. As you can see, each of these guitars don't have a headstock. So they're headstockless, is that a word? But anyway, as you can see, they've also got a Floyd Rose style bridge at the bottom. So tuning stability will also be very, very good. I had a chance to pick one of these up and they were extremely light. One of the interesting things about these Strandberg guitars is the fact that they've got angled frets. Supposedly this is better for ergonomics. There's also a zero fret on each of these as well. Cool stuff. If you're like me and you like traditional style guitars, they also make their version of a Tally style electric. I think this looks pretty cool. Let me know what you think. I know it's very, very different, but I like it. For those of you who appreciate something a little bit different, these cigar box guitars from Rockwood were absolutely stunning. I don't even think the high def 4K camera does them justice. They're just like works of art, but still extremely functional guitars and they sounded great. The guy who made them was actually able to showcase one for me as well. Take a listen. It's a real shame there's just so much background noise at these events, but thankfully though, once every hour for 15 minutes, they give our ears a break by making sure everyone turns the guitar amplifiers off, which was an awesome addition to the show. Aperla is a guitar and amplifier company from Queensland, Australia, so my neighbours to the north. These particular guitars look absolutely stunning. They kind of remind me a little bit of the vibe of the Little Crow guitars mixed with something maybe like a Nick Huber or even something like a PRS. It was also great to see an Australian company making some amplifiers that definitely look unique. I don't know what these are based on, but judging by the top, they're probably based on some sort of Fender series amplifier or thereabouts. They look very simple in terms of their control, but I love the dovetail joins on the cabs. They look like a million bucks. One of the things that makes a Perla stand out, in my opinion, is notice the scratch plate. It's actually a recycled vinyl record. Yep, so they recycle a lot of wood, a lot of plastic, and all of that kind of stuff, and that particular series is called the Tree Hugger series. They don't use any bad or nasty chemicals on the guitars either. They're all oil finishes, from what I was told. They look really, really nice, and there's definitely something very unique about them, very appealing. I really like this one. If this was a lefty, I would have walked out with it. I half expected this guitar to sell for somewhere around three grand, being it was a handmade guitar here in Australia, but it was under $1,200 or $1,400, or somewhere around there from memory. Without question, this was one of my favorite booths of the day. I'd love to demo some of these guitars on the channel if I ever have a chance to. I think they look beautiful. Let me know what you think in the comments. These are Charles Cilia guitars. These are made in New South Wales, which is the state within Australia. Some of the tops on these might be some of the best I've seen on any guitars from any brand. Check them out. Please remain calm. We have our first official lefty sighting. You might remember this guitar from the last Guitar Search Saturday I did at the Melbourne Guitar Show, and that's because it is exactly the same guitar. I had a feeling it might be at the show, so I went over and it was in exactly the same position. I thought that was pretty hilarious. 
Check out this top. This is really, really beautiful. Chapman Guitars were also at the show, sharing part of their booth with Achilles Amplifiers, which are made right here in Melbourne, Australia. I'm still not buying the hype around these guitars. While they might look good and be decent value, depending on what part of the world you're from, of course, I'm not sure I really get it. If I want a Telecaster, I just go buy a Telecaster. <laughs> If you're unfamiliar with Achilles amplifiers, they're handmade right here in Melbourne, Australia. I've had a chance to review a number of them. I'll put a playlist up in the cards. Cranburn Music is a shop I bought so much stuff from over the years and it was great to see them at the show. They had some of the best Duesenberg guitars I've ever seen, including this beautiful lefty. Check it out. Duesenberg guitars play themselves. They feel really great in the hand. They look super cool and their tremolo arm, in my opinion, is second to none. I haven't played a guitar with a better tremolo system or a more stable tremolo system than a Duesenberg. Cranbourne Music's a shop I've bought so much stuff from over the years, maybe something like 10 amplifiers, like actual gigging amplifiers. It's great to see they're still bringing in something that's a little bit different and unique, and yes, that isn't my hand. <laughs> If there's one guitar I aspire to own, it would be a Nick Huber Orca 59. It's a stunning electric guitar, maybe the best one I've ever played. I played one of Jerry's Lefty Guitars in Florida, and it was stunning. This beautiful looking aged Telecaster is actually called the Tallyman T52 Keith Aged, based on something that maybe Keith Richards would play. Check it out, it's got a humbucker neck pickup, a single coil tally bridge pickup, it's got the relic thing going on, and in terms of value for money, these are much more affordable than, say, a Fender Custom Shop guitar. I believe it's a German company, but their production is in the Czech Republic. That said, the quality is something special. I can't wait to test these out. I might have to put the hard word on Cranburn to see if Rick and I can borrow a few. <laughs> Up until shooting this video, I haven't actually come across D'Angelico electric guitars in person before. They're out of New York City. They have a really beautiful headstock, although some people give them a hard time, but I like it. I think it looks really, really classy. Last year, myself, Rick and Ryan all got a chance to test out the George Evans amplifiers. Well, those guys did. I didn't because I didn't have a left-handed guitar. That said though, these are really great locally made amplifiers from Melbourne, Australia. If you haven't had a chance to listen to these amplifiers, I'll post a link up in the cards and you can check it out. On the Guitar Search Saturday, I shot at Five Star Music. You probably remember me saying some pretty favorable things about Schecter. Yes, Schecter of all brands. I'm not a metal style player or anything like that, but I can appreciate a nice guitar. They're actually starting to branch out a little bit and make some stuff that's a little more mainstream for boring guys like myself. Here's a Strat and a Tally, both made in the USA from Schecter. These are beautiful looking instruments. And here's the Tally up close. I dig it. Up next we have Brock Guitars. These are handmade custom guitars from Melbourne, Australia that definitely look unique. I would put these high on the list of the most interesting sort of guitars I saw on the day and maybe some of the most special. These stood out for me for a couple of reasons. While they're kind of reminiscent of some shapes you already know, they just definitely look different and I gotta say I was really impressed with the craftsmanship of these. Check them out if you're into something a little bit different. Brock Guitars are pretty cool. I had almost one hour of footage at the show, so what you're about to see is just a quick walkthrough of some of the stuff that was on display. Let's get into it.
think of that colour? That silver tally, I reckon that looks alright. These are all Eastman guitars. They're really nice instruments. The guy that was running the booth actually recognized me and he said, hey, I saw your video from last year. This year, I've actually bought some lefties so you can check them out. These are beautiful guitars at a reasonable price as well, even here in Australia where things tend to cost a little more. I had a chance to play some of these over at Jerry's Lefty Guitars a couple of years back and they definitely sound great. Basically, these are Chinese made instruments, but they're built extremely well. A huge thanks to the guys from Eastman for supplying some lefties. Unfortunately, though, there was someone already playing at the booth, so I was unable to really pick one up and have a go on camera. Maybe next year, all being well. This vintage Telecaster was somewhere up around 16,000 Australian dollars. I don't have the specific details on it, but man, it was actually pretty nice to see it in person. One of the best things about the show, in my opinion, was the fact that there were so many used and old school vintage electric guitars and acoustic guitars on display. One of the cool things was not only were there the mainstream brands like Fender and Gibson and all that kind of stuff, they also had a lot of Australian brands such as Maton as well, which I thought was really cool. This booth was packed all day, so I'll show you some of the highlights from what I saw. Believe it or not, but we actually have Michael Kelly guitars in Australia. Yes, we finally have a distributor for them, so they've made it onto our shores. The thing is though, they're so much more expensive. It's the same old story. I got quoted about $1,000 for that green guitar right there. I'm sure the deal price would be less, but yeah, if you know what these are worth, it's kind of crazy. My good friend Nick from the Nick in the States YouTube channel has done so many reviews on these guitars. If you haven't seen them, I'll post some links up in the cards and you can check them out. But I'm at least glad they're available now in Australia. Here's a quick comparison between the new and the old logo. Let me know which one you like the best.
This was actually at the Reverb.com booth. This definitely wins one of the weirdest guitars of the day. I'm not even sure what this is. It's got lots of strings, a very unique paint job, and I'll put that in quotations. But these guys were actually really, really awesome. They didn't know who I was. I didn't mention that I did YouTube or anything like that. And they gave me a free t-shirt and a clip-on tuner. So thanks, Reverb.com. Awesome stuff. Oh yeah, by the way, that's $20,000. It was no surprise to see Fender at the show. They had quite a number of really nice guitars on display, including these two Telecasters. The thing was though, I felt like there could have been a whole lot more amplifiers in this particular section. Even if they were just there on display, it was mostly featured just around guitars. Definitely would have been cool to have a few more amps. They did feature the Fender Mustang GT series amps, but you know, uh, word is around the campfire, they're not really my thing. Hats off though to Fender for bringing a couple of lefties in as well this year. They actually had quite a number of them on display. Great stuff. You might remember Ruben guitars from last year, but for those who are new to the channel, you might not have seen these before. They're really beautiful electric guitars and they also make some absolutely stunning, almost artwork like acoustic guitars, which you'll see in a moment. Ruben guitars actually feature a $30,000 acoustic guitar in a display cabinet coming up as well, which is crazy. But this is the last of the downstairs section before we go upstairs and take a quick look at the acoustic section as well. I much enjoyed the time downstairs a whole lot more than upstairs, but we'll take a quick look around anyway. Like I mentioned, these are really beautiful guitars. I'd be pretty scared to play one of these with a belt on. The good thing about the acoustic section upstairs is it's definitely not as busy, so you can kind of walk around with a little bit more space, and it's also a great time to give your ears a break from all the shredders downstairs. I'm gonna keep this relatively short and sweet and just give you a quick overview of what they had. Let's check it out. These Octagon guitars were definitely one of the two standouts from upstairs, no doubt about it. Without question, these Rosolo guitars are absolutely stunning. They make a wide selection of electrics and acoustics, and these were definitely the other standout from upstairs, in my opinion. Just simply beautiful instruments. And that wraps up another Guitar Search Saturdays. A huge thanks to everyone who came up and said hello. I must have been stopped 40 odd times, so appreciate everybody's positive comments regarding the channel and what I do online. It was a real pleasure to meet everybody. It was also great to be welcomed by a whole lot of the vendors and companies that know me from online who I haven't actually worked with, who allowed me to shoot in their stalls as well. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. There was a lot of really great stuff. The acoustic section upstairs was almost as large as the electric guitar section downstairs, but there's only so much you can cram into one of these videos, and I tried to pick the stuff that you hadn't seen from the prior Guitar Switch Saturday, as well as just some of the old favorites as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do enjoy the series, please give the video the thumbs up. I really appreciate that. This particular video, I'm guessing, will take close to about 18 hours to finish. It's a really long time. I had nearly one hour of footage. 
to sort of chop that up and to try to pick the best bits it always takes a while so thank you so much for the support if you do enjoy the series and you want to binge watch a few more i'll also post the playlist up in the cards and you can check them out if you do enjoy guitar search saturdays and you want to support the show you can head over to patreon i'll have all the links down in the description below a massive thanks to Colin, Jamal, Kristen, Mike, BV, and Todd for supporting the show. They've all been a huge support for my original content, and I can't thank them enough, so thank you so much, guys. There's one more local episode of Guitar Search Saturdays to go before I head overseas. I'm actually off to Denmark, and believe it or not, I'm actually going to Sweden, which is right next door. It's like a 15-minute drive. So the plan is to film a couple of episodes over there. I already have a few lined up. So fingers crossed it all works out. I'll have some episodes coming up from a completely different part of the world, which will be amazing. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. My name's Shane. I'll catch you on the next one. See you soon.